well. So what we learned so far in our pre-calculus class, we start talking about relations and then we introduce the uh, graphs of those relations. So this is our focus today. Remember that we define a relation as a collection of points in X, Y plane. If it passes vertical line test, then we are dealing with functions. To each one of them, we can associate the domain and also the range. We talked about x-intercept, y-intercept. So let's just write this down here. So you recall these definitions from last week. A relation is a collection of points. The relation R equals to, well, in general, we define a relation this way, collection of ordered pairs, x sub zero, y sub zero, comma, x sub one, y sub one, comma, x sub two, y sub two, and the rest of the points. We define the domain of a relation as the set of all first coordinates. Okay, which is the set of x sub zero, comma, y sub, sorry, x sub one, comma, x sub two, and the rest of the first coordinates. And the range is defined as the set of all second coordinates. In this case, it is equal to the set of y sub zero, y sub one, y sub two, and the rest of them. So from a relation, we move on and define a function. A function is a relation whose graph passes vertical line test. Remember that when we talked about the graph, we were interested in finding the x-intercept and the y-intercept of the graph. To find x, intercept of a relation, a function, we set, well, y equal to zero and solve for x. So in this case, you might have x-intercept, point of intersection with x-axis, or it might be above x-axis. For y-intercept, we set our x equal to zero and solve for y. In either case, when you're finding x intercept, y intercept, you have points. So when you say, hey, I found x intercept, it means that you found a point. In this point, your y is zero, and then your x coordinate is just a constant. Let's call it, for example, x sub zero. When we're talking about y intercept, we set x equal to zero. It means that our point has first coordinate zero, and the second coordinate is just a y value. Well, another characteristic for a graph is the symmetry of that graph. So we're going to talk about symmetry of the graph of a relation, a graph of a function, and check to see how that symmetry help us to analyze the behavior, the nature of that graph. So definition, a graph like y equals to f of x is symmetric. We say that with respect to 
for example, y-axis, if, if you take any point on that graph, on the opposite side, you have the exact same point with the same y value, but the opposite x value. If x and y is on the graph, so as negative x and y. So take a look at this. They say that symmetric with respect to y axis. It means that opposite x values both are on the graph. Algebraically, f of x is equal to f of minus x. So if you have the definition of that relation or that function, f of x and f of, after substituting minus x for x, they must be equal to each other. So this is symmetric with respect to y-axis. We also have symmetry with respect to x-axis, the horizontal line. A graph like y equals to f of x is symmetric with respect to x-axis. So now we move to the horizontal line or x-axis. If you take any point like x and y on the graph, press on the graph, so as x and minus y. Now your x is fixed, you have y and also negative y. y and its opposite must be on the graph as well. Algebraically, if you want to take a look at it, y and negative y. Algebraically, well, here you're replacing y and negative y into the definition that you have. So y and negative y must be equal to each other. Replacing y with negative y give us the same definition. We also have something that we call symmetric with respect to the origin. If x and y is on the graph, so as minus x and minus y. We call that guy symmetry with respect to the origin. So let's write down the last one. Symmetry with respect to the origin, x and y, and also negative x and negative y. They are both on the graph of your relation or your function that you have that's defined for you. I need to check to see if I replace negative x and negative y into the relation, I get x and y back. Okay, give us some examples. Question says, check the symmetry.
So the question usually doesn't ask to check for symmetry with respect to X, with respect to Y or the origin. They just ask you, hey, check the symmetry, and then you have to check these three and eventually decide if it's symmetric with respect to the Y axis, X axis, or to the origin. So the very first one given to us is Y equals to 2X to the third power. We say that a graph is symmetric with respect to Y axis, a vertical line. Well, if F of X is equal to F of negative X. So let's first check one. Symmetry with respect to Y axis. So here you need to see if you switch X and change it to minus X, you get the exact same Y value or not. So if a graph is symmetric with respect to Y axis substitution of X by minus X must give us the original formula back. So what I'm going to do, wherever I see X, I'm going to use minus X. That's the definition. So on the left-hand side, you have one. On the right-hand side, you have two X cubed. You get two X. What is X? I'm going to switch that to minus X. I get minus X. But what is this? Let us simplify. So if you want to simplify, you're going back to algebra from algebra. Recall that if you have the multiplication of two quantities in a parentheses and raise it to power n, you can split this as a to the n times b to the n. So what's the meaning of that? It means that minus x to power three can be written as negative is negative one times x, negative one times x to the power three. So negative one is your a, x is your b, you get negative one to the power three, x to the power three. So what do you have here? Here you have negative one times negative one times negative one times x to the third. Negative times negative, positive times negative, negative. So you get minus x cubed. So here you have two times minus x to the power three. Two times negative one is negative two. This is actually two times negative one times x to the power three, which is negative two times x to the power three, right? So you should be asking if this guy is equal to this guy. No, not at all, which is not equal to two x cubed. Okay. Since we don't have equality, it means that it's not symmetric with respect to y-axis. So this is your conclusion. So you can say that since after substitution, negative two x cubed is not the same as two x cubed. It means that we don't have symmetry 
with respect to y axis. Okay. This is your y axis. We don't have any symmetry with respect to y axis. What about your x axis? So let us check to see if we have symmetry with respect to x axis. To check the symmetry with respect to x axis, it means that we just need to switch y by negative y. If we get the exact same definition, then we say that, hey, we have symmetry with respect to x axis. If a graph is symmetric with respect to x axis, substitution of y by minus y must give the original formula back. Well, what do I have here? I have y on the left-hand side and I have two x cubed on the right hand side. So this is my original formula. Y is equal to two x cubed. Now I'm going to substitute this by minus y. What do I get? Well, I get a totally different formula. If you multiply both sides by negative sign, your y becomes minus two x cubed, which is different from the original formula that is presented to me. So again, your conclusion is, since it is different from the original formula, it is not symmetric with respect to x axis. What's left? Now we just need to check the symmetry with respect to the origin. With respect to the origin, okay. So I'm going to write this down here. Symmetry with respect to the origin. It means that we have to replace x by minus x, y by minus y. You have to do two substitutions, x to minus x and y to minus y. If you get the original relation back, then you say that, hey, you have symmetry with respect to the origin. Well, it's not that hard to see. You have y equals to, 2x cubed. If I replace y by minus y and x by minus x, negative y is equal to 2 negative x cubed. I already saw the algebra here. I end up with negative 2x cubed. So minus y is equal to negative 2x cubed. I can cancel out these two negative signs and I get y equals to 2x cubed, which is the same as the original given relation between y and x. So see that we have symmetry with respect to the origin. Here you have y equals to 2x cubed. Very good. So what do you see here? Is it symmetric with respect to y-axis? If it was symmetric with respect to y-axis, then you must see the exact same 
part of the graph that is repeated on the right-hand side reflected on the left-hand side as well. So for example, a function like y equals to x squared is symmetric with respect to y-axis. If I take any point, any point on the graph, like for example, this point or this point, any point on the graph, then you see this is one and one on the graph. You see negative one and one on the graph as well. So you say that, hey, we have symmetry with respect to y-axis. If you fold the graph vertically, left-hand side and the right-hand side are going to be exactly the same. So this is for symmetric with respect to y-axis. But as you can see, this function 2x cubed, it's not symmetric with respect to y-axis. Some part of the function is on the first quadrant. Some other part is in the third quadrant. OK, well, what about x-axis? Do I have symmetry with respect to x-axis? If you have symmetry with respect to x-axis for any point that you take on the graph, well, you must see the exact same point in the fourth quadrant. In the first quadrant, here you have, for example, one and two, okay? You must see one and negative two on the graph if you want to have symmetry with respect to x-axis. So what's the example of symmetric with respect to x-axis? Here you have, for example, y squared equals to x. This is a function which is symmetric with respect to x-axis. So if you take a look at this green relation, green graph, we have symmetry with respect to x-axis. If I fold this graph horizontally, then the upper side and the lower side are exactly the same. They are matching. But as you can see, y equals to 2x cubed is not symmetric with respect to x-axis. What about symmetry with respect to the origin? If I take any point on this graph, like 1 and 2, it's opposite, which is negative 1. And negative 2 is also on the graph. So this is an example of symmetry with respect to the origin. OK, give us more example. We want to see more example for these types of analysis for the graph of different relations, functions, Perfect. So suppose you have x minus y squared equals to 1. Check the symmetry for x minus y squared equals to 1. There you go. So step by step. Let's check the symmetry for y-axis. symmetry y-axis. So if you want to check the symmetry for y-axis, it means that your x and minus x, the opposite ones must be both on the graph of this, whatever it is, relation, is it a function, does it pass vertical like this? Think about it. So substitute x by minus x. We must get the exact same relation back. Okay, let's check to see what we have here. I'm going to substitute negative x for x. So what do I get? I get minus x. Well, minus y squared equals to 1. Hey, are these two the same? Without doing any 
algebra. Just take a look at these two. It says, hey, I have x minus y squared one. It says, I have negative x minus y squared equals to one. Obviously, they are different from each other. These two are different. So we do not have symmetry with respect to y-axis. OK. What about x-axis? Symmetry with respect to x-axis. What are we going to do? We're going to replace y by minus y. Wherever you see y, just write down negative y. So y two minus y. If you get the original relation back, you say that, hey, yeah, I'm good. <clears throat> so x stays the same, minus your y, the quantity here has exponent two. So you're going to use a parentheses and put minus y inside the parentheses to the second power equals to one. So first of all, you have a negative sign raised to the second power. You have to simplify that. Recall from algebra, negative y to the second power is equal to, what's the meaning of this exponent? It means that you take this quantity and multiply it by itself twice. So here you have a minus y times minus y, which is plus y squared. So what happened here? I have x minus y squared equals to one. Now compare it with the original equation that is given to you. x and x minus sign and minus sign. y squared and y squared equal one. Hey, we got the original equation back. What's the meaning of that? It means that your graph is symmetric with respect to x-axis. So since we have the exact same formula, so it is symmetric with respect to x-axis. So now we just represented a graph which is symmetric with the horizontal line. It means that if you fold this horizontally, the upper side and the lower side are exactly the same. Now let's check symmetry with respect to the origin. Symmetry with respect to the origin. So here you have to do two substitutions x to minus x, y to minus y. Well, let's see what do we have here. This is the original equation that we have. This is given to us. So wherever you see x, write down minus x. So here you get minus x, use the different color, so we can distinguish between this, minus x. Then I have a subtraction. Then since I'm changing my y and it has an exponent, I have to use parentheses. Parentheses minus y to the second power. On the right hand side, I only have a constant. I'm just going to copy it down here. Okay. Now, since you have negative sign inside parentheses with an exponent, you have to simplify. You cannot leave it like this. Minus x minus, we just saw that negative y to the second power is negative y times negative y or positive y to the second power. Negative x minus y squared equals to one. Now let us stop. Let us compare these two. Minus x and x. Nope, they are not the same. Subtraction, y squared equals to one. Since negative x and x are not the same, it means that we do not have symmetry with respect to the origin. So since 
this relation is different from the original relation. So we don't have symmetry with respect to the origin. This is algebra behind it. When a question on homework, in quiz, in midterm, ask you to check for symmetry, you have to check it algebraically. Then double check that using technology to make sure that, hey, your algebra actually just um, satisfy the information that you got online. Check Desmos. So here you have, well, x minus y squared equals to one. Well, take a look at this graph. This graph, if you fold it horizontally, the upper side of the graph match the lower side of the graph. It means that you have symmetric, symmetric with respect to the x axis. Sorry, uh, Professor. So oh, here's the picture of the graph. X minus Y squared is equal to one. So if you fold this graph horizontally, the upper side and lower side are exactly the same. So as you can see, as you can visualize this graph, this is symmetric with respect to the horizontal axis or X axis. Well, next example, what do we have here? Check for symmetry. Now we're going to move on to more complex functions like absolute value functions. So remember the definition of absolute value. Absolute value is the distance from the origin. So here, a quick recall for you. Absolute value of x is a piecewise defined function. It has two pieces. If x is larger than equal to zero, you get your x back, the quantity, whatever it is, back. If x is less than zero, you have to put a minus sign in front of that quantity. You're just using x for simplicity. And let's see. So this example says, check for symmetry for y equals to absolute value of x minus one. Okay, very good. So let's see what do we have here. Do we have symmetry with respect to x-axis? Do we have symmetry with respect to y-axis? What do we have? Maybe origin, maybe none. So to check the symmetry for y-axis, you have to replace one x by negative x. So let us do that. You're going to copy down y. You're going to copy down equality, copy down absolute value. Wherever you see x, you have to substitute that by minus x. Minus x, and then minus 1, close the absolute value. Just stop. You don't have anything to simplify here. And just take a look at these two expressions. Try to compare them. Y and Y, equality, equality. Absolute value, you have X, you have minus X. These two are different from each other. Everything else is the same except for this minus X, and we cannot get rid of it. We cannot simplify it. If you factor up negative sign in the best case scenario, here you have your result. For sure, you can say that, hey, since these two are not equal to each other, we don't have symmetry with respect to y-axis. But if you want to go further and factor out y, you're going to get this. y is equal to absolute value of minus x plus 1. Then since you have a minus sign, this absolute value gives you absolute value of x plus one back, you get rid of the negative sign. 
Why is that? Let us just down this, write down this recall for you here. If you have absolute value of minus x plus one, it becomes the absolute value of minus one times x plus one. You can just separate these and write it in multiplication form. You get absolute value of minus one times the absolute value of x plus one. The absolute value of x uh, of negative one is one. Why is that? It says, hey, the distance between negative one and zero is what? The distance, if you use a ruler, the distance is just one unit. So it becomes one times absolute value of x plus one or just absolute value of x plus one. So you can either compare these two or if you want to just simplify it more, you get to the absolute value of x plus one which is different from the absolute value of x minus one. Both of them give you the exact same result. No, it's not symmetric with respect to y-axis. Different quantities. What about symmetric with respect to x-axis? It means that wherever I see y, I have to replace that by negative y. Okay, this is my original, Relation, wherever I see y, I'm going to copy down minus y. I get minus y equals to, well, on the right hand side, absolute value of x minus one. We don't have anything to do. We don't have any simplification to do. What you can do in the best case scenario is to multiply both sides by negative sign and y becomes a negative absolute value of x minus one. Y is minus absolute value of x minus one. Compare these two. You have absolute value of x minus one. Yeah, that's true. But what do you do with this negative sign? This guy has a negative sign. This guy doesn't have negative sign. They are not the same. So another no, because of this minus sign in front of the absolute value. What are symmetric, symmetric with respect to the origin? We have to do two substitutions here. Well, you get negative y equals to absolute value. Let's just copy down equality, copy down absolute value. And inside absolute value, you have x. So you're going to write down as minus x. Well, minus one and close up the absolute value. Okay, how do you simplify this? You have a minus y and you can write this as y equals to minus the absolute value of minus x minus one. Guys, common mistake. You cannot distribute this minus sign. Be careful here. Note. Negative absolute value of negative x minus one is not, is not the same as absolute value of minus, minus x minus one. It's not. You cannot distribute negative sign into the absolute value. It is wrong. If you have something like this, the best thing you can do is just factor out the negative sign inside the absolute value, like this case that we showed, and get absolute value of x plus one back. In the best case scenario, it's going to be equal to, well, copy down the minus sign, absolute value of x plus one. Okay, now start comparing. Y is the same, absolute value has a positive sign. This guy has a negative sign. Inside the absolute value, you have X minus one plus one, everything is different. They are not the same. So the answer is no. We just went over one example 
that is not symmetric with respect to X, not symmetric with respect to Y, not symmetric with respect to the origin. A lot of graphs, a lot of relations, a lot of functions are not even symmetric. So what's the graph like? We're not going to use Desmos. We're going to use paper and pencil to graph this. Well, so when you are finding the graph of, or when you try to graph the absolute value, first find its x-intercept. Graph y equals the absolute value of x minus y. So first, find the x intercept. x intercept, the point of intersection with x axis. So you know that to find x intercept, we set y equal to 0 and solve for x. OK set this guy equal to zero. Zero equals the absolute value of x minus one. So before doing algebra, what does it tell us? It tells us the distance, the distance from this quantity to the origin is zero. Okay, the distance is zero. It means that whatever this quantity is, it must be equal to zero. Again, when you have absolute value, absolute value represent the distance. This is the distance that you have, distance. It says, hey, the distance of this quantity to the origin is zero. So what's the meaning of that? It means that this guy must be zero itself. So x minus one must be zero. Let us add one to both sides. X must be one. Okay. It says, hey, the point of intersection with X axis is at one and zero. Let's take a look at this. Let us take a look at, at X absolute value of X minus one. If X is larger than or equals to one, then I get rid of the absolute value. This quantity becomes x minus 1. If x is less than 1, I get minus this quantity back, or absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to. If x is larger than equals to 1, you get line x minus 1. And if x is less than 1, you get 1 minus x. This is the definition of absolute value of x minus 1 mathematically. Okay, the graph, the graph is not that hard. You look at the domain. Remember that here you have x-axis, here you have y-axis. When x is larger than or equal to one, it means that we are on the right-hand side of one. On this part, you have x larger than or equals to one. One is the definition. The definition is x minus one. If you plug in one, you get zero back. If you plug in two, two minus one is just one. So here you get this piece of line. Y equals to X minus one. Well, when X is less than one, like zero, you get the left-hand side of your graph. So if X is less than one, like zero. Okay, if I plug in zero, it means that I have to use the second part of the graph. One minus zero is just one. So I get the other part of the graph, which is one minus x. Okay, now this is obvious. What do we see? Is this symmetric with respect to y-axis? If I just take this graph and fold it vertically with respect to y-axis, so some part of it is here, some part of it is here. If it was at the origin, yeah, we're fine, but it's not at the origin. 
no symmetry with respect to y-axis. Is a symmetric with respect to x-axis. It doesn't even have anything on the third or fourth quadrant that I work with. Obviously, it's not symmetric with respect to x-axis. The origin, of course not. Again, to be symmetric with respect to the origin, you must have the exact same graph on the third quadrant as well. So visually, it's not symmetric. Okay. 